Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to congratulate uh, General Richardson and her husband. I think in your family, there are more stars than the Milky Way. I, I mean, this is uh, extraordinary. Uh, I don't think we've ever had this many, uh, this, this high level in, in uh, both sides of a family. So congratulations on, on your nomination. Uh, I've been asking the same question for about five years. It maybe is getting marginally better, but what really frustrates me is that we know about uh, 100 drug shipments from uh, the Latin American AOR, and we, can, we have the capacity to interdict 25, maybe 30% of them. I hope that you will advocate for more resources, whether it's naval training vessels, additional Coast Guard, uh, whatever it is, it, it, there's given the, the 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 tragedy that's going on. I mean, we're we're losing uh, tens of thousands of people every year. I think 90,000 this year, uh, including four or five hundred. I think over 500 in my state of Maine uh, to overdoses. Please amp up the ramp up the the capacity to interdict these shipments and also the ISR to know where they are. Well, thank you, Senator, and uh, and certainly, as Admiral Fowler has said, is we can't interdict our way out of this. And so, uh, not only will uh, will I, uh, if confirmed, work very aggressively uh, on this uh, on this way forward uh, through Jayat of South, which is the Joint Interagency Task Force South uh, under U.S. Southcom uh, that uh, that has the uh, Air and Maritime mission for detect and monitoring for this but also the whole of government approach. You have the interagency that's integrated within Jayat of South as well. You have partner nations that are uh, part of this team. The partner nations uh, participated in 60% of the interdictions that occurred uh, last year. And so I think that uh, just uh, continuing to work on that, but absolutely I will advocate for that, Senator. Well, we may not be able to interdict our way out of it, but we can do a heck of a lot more interdiction than we are doing. Uh, and that's just a lack of, of, of facilities of ships. So uh, I, I want, you, I hope that you will be very aggressive with your uh, colleagues uh, in the in the Navy and the Coast Guard. Uh, that that we just need more resources. It's it's inexcusable that we know of a hundred shipments and we only interdict thirty. I mean that's that is one thing if we don't know about them, but if we know about them and can't stop them, uh, and people are dying up here, that's that's not. Uh, that's not acceptable. Let me change the subject uh, for a moment. How do we bolster the the Northern Triangle countries economically and, and in terms of internal security in order to, to slow the flow of the migrants to our border? How do we do that while dealing with what are often essentially corrupt governments? How do we how do we get around the government? It doesn't do any good to send millions or billions of dollars to these countries if it gets siphoned off uh, by uh, by regimes that uh, that aren't serving the, the people only themselves. Well, Senator, certainly through uh, institutional capacity building is uh, extremely important, and uh, and working. Uh, not not giving up with our partner nations and continuing to try to work with them. Uh, as I said before, the uh, a core principle in the U.S. military uh, is human rights and the and the rule of law, and we have to continue to uh, to uh, have this um, have this uh, within all of our training, which it is, and continue to uh, to leverage that not just institutional capacity building, but the militaries are very well respected in this region. And quite honestly, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the people look at the militaries as a way to have a better life and a way to uh, get out of the, the, um, the uh, poverty and the, and the violence and things like that. And so again, persistent engagement uh, with security cooperation, the exercises, uh, the train and equip, uh, foreign military sales, foreign military financing. Uh, Senator Ernst mentioned the National Guard State Partnership Program. Uh, nine members on this committee have uh, have state partnerships with the the countries in Latin America. So there are a lot of a lot of levers that we have to continually be persistent about use, utilizing in this region. Well, I I, I uh, 
I hope you uh, we're asking you questions as if you've been there three years, and I hope these are things that will be on your mind. We have to figure out how to support and encourage and, re and rebuild those countries uh, without the, the sometimes outside of the, the corrupt local governments. The other thing that I'm interested in following as you're on this job is the course of Chinese influence and whether they can maintain their influence when the bills come due, uh, because what they're really engaged in now is debt diplomacy. And I think some of those deals aren't going to look as good to those countries when uh, the Chinese are looking uh, for repayment. But in any case, I appreciate your testimony, General. Congratulations. And I, too, look forward to supporting your nomination.